cruising through this book, this book here, and in this here book, I found that, uh, some special news, it's definitely, uh, updated, certainly not on a website that I'm looking at behind this book, it's in this book, right here right here, yeah that some uh, scientists apparently have discovered the uh, great pyramid the great pyramid of Giza it can focus electromagnetic energy through its hidden chambers. Now, oh, how rude, excuse me. I should take my hat off when I'm indoors here, shouldn't I? It's just that it's, uh, been such a long trip, very hot, very sunny. This here book. Now, some very famous, very courageous speculators such as Robert Bouval and Graham Hancock and the late John Anthony West. John Anthony West, he was a true, true soldier. They have, indeed, speculated on the magnetic and electro, electromagnetic, I guess that covers both ends of the electric and magnetic gamut. They've speculated that the Great Pyramid of Giza with its intricate very precise, extremely precise mathematical um, characteristics was uh, built to to harness and resonate electromagnetic um, emissions, I suppose you call them. Now, scientists on uh, July 31st, this very day, just out back in uh, Giza, Egypt, have been using these fancy 
cosmic particles, cosmic particles they call muons, 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 to probe the pyramid for certain electromagnetic characteristics. And they found that some of these, at certain frequencies, this, this monumental structure of the, uh, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, built five, maybe six thousand years ago, is apparently able to concentrate and amplify and resonate magnetic frequencies, um, magnetic fields and electric fields. So I'm going to read to you a couple of articles about this because This is a pretty big breakthrough. The remarkable electromagnetic properties of the Great Pyramid of Giza could soon inspire nanoparticle designs for highly efficient sensors. So, scientists have found that the famous pyramid can concentrate electric and magnetic <laughs> energy in its chambers and below its base, giving rise to distinct pockets of higher energy. So. The uh, resonance effect, how certain geometric designs can amplify a local area in space from the, from the constructive interference of the wave forms of Radio, um, radio waves, which are a certain range of wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. So while the 481-foot pyramid built thousands of years ago for Pharaoh Khufu has long drawn intrigue for its purported mythical qualities. The study is among a growing body of research, attempting to finally get to the bottom of its physical properties. Egyptian pyramids have always attracted great attention, says Dr. Andrea Andre Evliokin, Evliokin, scientific supervisor and coordinator of the research. He's quoted as saying, we as scientists were interested in them as well, so we decided to look at the Great Pyramid as a particle dissipating radio waves. Sorry, I had to unpack that sentence. 
as a particle dissipating radio waves resonantly. So that means it acts as a filter almost through which when radio waves pass they are manipulated by its geometric structure. The researchers from ITMO University modeled the distribution of magnetic fields inside the pyramid, investigating the interactions with waves of resonant length from 200 to 600 meters. Now, given the lack of reliable information about the pyramid's properties, the team says though they did have to uh, fill in some blanks and make some assumptions regarding its internal structures because it's been long thought that the pyramid, the Great Pyramid actually contains hidden chambers that were, that were sealed off at the end of construction. So there may be chambers that are, of course, free space without any stone structures inside them. Um, and these chambers may direct the magnetic and electric Resonate. Now, for me, complete speculation here, but um, I actually tweeted my good buddy Graham Hancock and Robert Bouval, my buddies. I didn't get a tweet back, but uh, I'm sure they already are well aware of this because that's their life. They researched this, but I was wondering if it amplifies due to the resonant properties of it any incoming cosmic radiation. Um, I wonder if it could act as some sort of sensor for um, perhaps giving the Egyptian a warn warning or indication of incoming coronal mass ejection um, particles because although Earth has a has a boundary a, a fairly significant magnetic field which filters the incoming uh, solar radiation away, deflects it, if you will, the deflects the solar wind, and uh, for the most part allows us to remain radiation free on Earth, at least, at least enough to uh, propagate. I think that maybe when it's too powerful, that's when you, for instance, see auroras in the, in the uh, southern and northern poles. So sometimes there, there are particles that, when it's too powerful, they do actually make it through to Earth. So we've only been around writing history for a few thousand years. So perhaps this, um, perhaps there have been in the past, maybe once in every, every hundred thousand years, once every fifteen thousand, that would be enough for us not to have witnessed, observed a CME or coronal mass ejection in our life, our civilization's lifetime.
perhaps this could could indeed detect and um, allow the Egyptians to uh, to run for safety. I don't know where they would go, but perhaps underground or not. Perhaps they just wouldn't be outside. So. They, the researchers, assumed that there were not any cavities inside um, for purposes of, of constructing an ideal, an ideal model of the pyramid to, uh, to get some results. They with those assumptions, they obtained some interesting results that could find important practical applications. A multipole analysis shows that the pyramid concentrates electromagnetic energy in its hidden chambers. And uh, I'll put up a, a graph right here. So we can see at the top left, well, the top row is, let's see, three. so I don't see, I don't see figure A, I don't see figure A at all. distribution on the top row is electric and the distribution on the bottom row is magnetic fields and these are mag magnitudes so we have volts per meter and Henry's per meter I guess Henry's per meter you measure the unit for measuring the magnetic field, magnetic field, a good old Henry. So this includes the chamber thought to contain Pharaoh Khufu's remains, and that made, and that made for his wife, along with a third, third unfinished chamber beneath the base. So when considering the pyramid, on a substrate such as limestone, the uh, plateau upon which it was built. The researchers say it focuses the energy through the empty space to down to the substrate. And you can kind of see that. Well, you can really, really see it. Really see it. It's, uh, it's amazing actually that it appears to It appears to amplify it and project it downward into the earth. Looks like 300 meters at least. It's so fascinating. So, so in the case of the pyramid on the substrate, at shorter wavelengths, wavelengths, the electromagnetic energy accumulates in the chambers, providing local spectral maxima which, uh, for electric and magnetic fields, which is just a fancy way of a scientific, technical, technical I guess, way of saying that that is where it peaks in strength. And So it is shown that basically the pyramid scatters the electromagnetic waves and then focuses them into the substrate region. So the region beneath it I 
Here, we can see the multipole analysis shows the pyramid concentrates electromagnetic energy in its hidden chambers. Distributions of electric on the top row and magnetic, again, on the bottom row in free space are shown. So the discovery isn't just important for understanding of the ancient mysterious pyramid. Mysterious pyramid, it really is. According to the researcher, the way electromagnetic energy distributes in the pyramid could actually make for an efficient particle design. And, uh, yeah, that's... Somehow, these people, that it's so easy to think of them as naive and ignorant and, and even kind of stupid, that they were able to build a structure that would take us a significant amount of time and energy, even with power, powered machines, construction equipment. structure, this incredible, timeless structure. So, choosing the material with suitable electromagnetic properties, we can obtain pyramidal nanoparticles with a promise for practical application in nanosensors and effective solar cells. Polina Capitanova, Capitanova, PhD, a member of the Faculty of Physics and Technology of IT Hamo University, says, ITMO University is one of Russia's leading higher education research institutes. Information technology, optical design, and engineering is what they specialize in. Founded in 1900, so it goes way back. Um, Yeah, so the abstract, the actual f paper submitted to the Journal of Applied Physics says electromagnetic properties of the Great Pyramid. First, multiple resonances and energy concentration. And the abstract is that resonant response of the Great Pyramid interacting with external electromagnetic waves of the radio frequency range, which, like I said, was 200 to 600 meters. Duh, you didn't know that. <laughs> is theoretically investigated with the help of numerical simulations and multipole decomposition. It's found that. So I guess multipole just means when you have a dipole, that's two poles, north and south. Um, a monopole doesn't exist for magnets. Magnets, magnets always have two poles. 
So multiple, I guess, would be more than, more than two, more than two, more than two poles. So maybe it's like a triangle or pyramidal type of uh, structure that they're uh, theoretically trying to analyze and um, uh, superimpose onto the actual pyramid. Um, I'm not sure, though. So maybe quantum ASMR, maybe you can help me out. For now, my layman's interpretation will have to suffice. <laughs> um, so with the help of numerical simulations and monopole, multipole decomposition, I don't know what that is again, it's found that the spectra of the extinction and scattering cross-sections include resonant features associated with the excitation of the pyramids electromagnetic dipole and quadrupole moments. So it's found that the spectra of the extinction and scattering across scattering cross sections include resonant features associated with the excitation. Okay. Moment quadrupole and dipole moments is referring to the property of like levers, but translated onto electrical theory of, um, oh man, I'd be lying if I, if I said I could explain that. I learned it at one point and I just never used it, so, um, it has to do with the with particles that have a positive and negative pole, so dipole, interacting with the overall electric field and magnetic field. They're in intimately uh, in interlinked. And uh, very generally, at, at they exist, the fields exist at right angles to one another. So, so if this was the electrical field oscillating like this, the magnetic field would be oscillating like this towards you. So electron electromagnetic field distributions inside the pyramid at the resonant conditions are demonstrated and discussed for two cases. Remember this is still the abstract we're reading here. When the pyramid is located in a homogeneous space or on a substrate, it's revealed that the pyramids chambers can collect and concentrate electromagnetic energy for both the surrounding conditions. In the case of the pyramid on the substrate, at shorter wavelengths, the electromagnetic energy accumulates in the chambers providing local spectral maxima for electric and magnetic fields. So that's at shorter wavelengths. So it, it expresses different characteristics when interacting with these particles, with these, with these electromagnetic fields at different magnitudes, I guess. No, not magnitudes, different frequencies. So, if you're talking about wavelengths of two to 600 meters long in between crests, it's going to exhibit different characteristics than wavelengths longer or shorter radio wavelengths from maybe one, you know, a hundredth to one meter or longer from, uh, you know, a thousand to ten thousand meters.
So it's shown basically that the pyramid scatters the electromagnetic wave and focuses them into the substrate region. The spectral dependence of the focusing effect is now discussed. Wow. Yeah, so this article is actually, well, not article, this is actual physics paper submitted for peer review. So, um, of course, it's going to be at the level of, you know, maybe uh, up, upper level college for physics majors. Because I guess, even if you're a PhD in physics, you're probably not doing a good job of explaining yourself if you have to only, if you can only write an explanation and articulate it to an audience of your peers. So the Egyptian pyramids are one of the wonders of the world, they write in the paper here which are of great interest to people far from science as well as researchers um, in various scientific fields including history, archaeology, architecture, and even physics and astronomy. Because um, of course that's why Robert Paval and Graham Hancock were very uh, adamant purporters, I guess. Um, they proposed with uh, seriousness, very much sincerity, that the pyramids were meant to align with the Orion's belt. And uh, it's such a fascinating theory. And if you rewind the oscillation, the wobble of the Earth, the procession of the equinox, which completes a cycle every 26,000 years. Robert Bouval actually used a uh, used software, used a program to rewind what the night sky would look like until he found it to match um, the point at which point in time which ended up being about I think 11 or 9,000 years ago or no 9,000 BC so like 11,000 years ago and he saw that two things synced up one was that the pyramids aligned with Orion's belt directly overhead and the other was that the Sphinx actually lined up looking directly at the constellation Leo, the lion, which is what the, the Sphinx appears to be, at least partly. So it's, uh, you know, to the layman like me, it's very convincing. Um, I'd like to see what, f I'd like to see further explanation, but ex exploration and explanation maybe by uh, by experts in astronomy and uh, archaeology and geology like Robert Schock. So legends associated with uh, with these amazing structures excite the imagination of people engendering various fables and some baseless assumptions. This is especially true of the Great Pyramid, the largest and most complex from a structural point of view. The, uh, the, pyramid, the pyramids present on the plateau of Giza in Egypt. In this context, applications of modern physical methods and approaches for investigations of pyramidal properties are important and productive. It could, it could allow to make a new discovery or get new information motivating new interests to the pyramids. 
for example, quite recently, cosmic ray muon radiography was used to discover a large void with a cross-section similar to the grand gallery in the uh, one of the known voids, one of the known cavities or rooms in the uh, pyramid. It's got a length of about 30 meters. So this large void, they appears to exist right above, directly above the gallery, the grand gallery, which constitutes the first major inner structure found in the Great Pyramid since the 19th, 19th century. In this paper, we use another modern approach and consider the Great Pyramid as a physical object that could have resonant properties when interacting with external electromagnetic waves of the uh, specifically of the radio frequency range with a corresponding wavelength gamma no lambda delta lambda gamma lambda i think it's lambda it looks like uh like an upside down y from 200 uh, to uh, 600 meters as we said we show that the observed resonant properties open the way to control the propagation and concentration of electromagnetic energy in the pyramid's vicinity. Our investigations are based on numerical simulations of the total electromagnetic fields that and total extinction, which is a different numerical approaches realized in the CST microwave studio and ComSolve multiphysics that's an acronym C-O-M-S-O-L multiphysics for independent tests our results of our results the method of discrete dipole approximation or DDA is used as well the multiple moments and the multiple decomposition of the extinction and scattering cross sections are calculated using the cross section here just means a two dimensional uh, kind of a profile two dimensional profile of the pyramid and multiple moments in multiple decomposition of the extinction and scattering cross-sections are calculated using the expressions for the Cartesian multipole moments obtained by the long wavelength approximation. As a result, our investigation sorry, I gotta, I gotta read better. As a result of our investigation, we find and explain a set of important features concerning the resonant concentration of electromagnetic energy by the pyramid. Note that the method of the multiple analysis of electromagnetic waves scattering of electromagnetic wave scattering by physical objects is widely used in photonics to study the optical resonances 
of metal and dielectric and nanoparticles. However, this approach can be effectively used in any electromagnetic spectral range if the wavelength of an incident wave are partial if the wavelength of an incident wave in the scattered dimensions are comparable so if you're allowed if you're able to conduct an experiment which allows you to compare comparable the incidental wave which means the um kind of baseline you know the 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 known variable so you have a wave and you understand its initial properties and then it kind of interacts or gets filtered through the pyramid structure which would be the um which would be the So, two of the main objectives of our study in this paper um, are partial removing of unreasonable speculations about electromagnetic properties of the Great Pyramid and the demonstration of flexibility of the multipole decomposition method for research at both the nano, nano, which is like smaller than micro and macro scales which is larger than micro so and then they go into the theoretical background with some very complex equations um, which relates the extinction cross-section in terms of which which tries to determine the extinction cross-section so it's omega or no sorry I, I forget all my Greek letters so it's um the cross-section is equal to the angular frequency of the incident monochromatic electromagnetic wave divided by 2 times the power times what time? basically times the integral of the electric field the incidental electric field so the known electric field times uh, and the dot product of the the uh, the mathematical representation of the polarization so But uh, let's go down to their conclusion and see what they concluded. These are uh, extremely, uh, this is so cool. Gosh. Alright, so the conclusion will uh, conclude. In this study, we have considered electromagnetic excitation of the Great Pyramid by plane waves, plane PLA, P-L-A-N-E, flat, two dimensions, 
with the with the wavelengths being larger than the typical size of the scatterer. In this case, only several first-order multiple resonances have been observed. The multiple analysis of electromagnetic waves and their scattering by the Great Pyramid has been performed in the radio frequency range and revealed important physical properties concerning the accumulation and focusing of electromagnetic energy. It has been shown that the pyramid can resonantly scatter electromagnetic waves and support resonant excitation of electromagnetic mu multipole lost my place multipoles which resulted in the strong electromagnetic fields in the inside the the volume the borders of the pyramid so for the pyramid located in free space we have demonstrated that the total total extinction cross section does not depend on the considered incident conditions however the magnetic field distributions inside the pyramid are different for the same wavelengths it leads to the different multiple decompositions for the both considered incident conditions for the pyramid located on the substrate we found that it basically scatters electromagnetic waves into the substrate so it, it focuses and scatters them downward into the focusing effect is observed. This is so interesting. It's kind of like when you have a, um, a magnifying glass and you can focus it to, you know, brilliance or something. Or leaves. It's, that's, a, that's an effect of the concavity or convex, convex, convex shape of the lens um, focusing the light to a single point at a certain distance away from it. So this pyramid is acting like a focal uh, instrument to focus electromagnetic radiation or radio waves um, a certain distance beneath the actual limestone substrate that it's sitting on. a lot of breakthroughs and you don't ever hear about them for years or ever so I hope this doesn't just get shoved under the rug um, this is so interesting so so they conclude by saying the obtained results can be considered as a first step to the further investigation of the pyramid electromagnetic properties the great pyramids electromagnetic properties and this approach can be extended to other physical objects and geometries. As one example, we can now study the complex system of the pyramids located at the Giza Plateau. Wow, so they're, they're going to start to perhaps investigate how they interact with one another when they all, if, if they're inside a magnetic field big enough and they're multiple individual Focal properties can interact with one another. God, that's fascinating. Um, so, in conclusion, note that the excitation of the pyramid.
they use higher energy and shorter wavelengths, you know, so the electromagnetic spectrum, like, it goes all the way down to, from radio, which is the longest, to gamma rays, which are the shortest, um, at the level of the atom. They, uh, they think that the pyramid could actually have an even more significant um, manipulation of, and concentration and resonance and uh, um, what do they, they say? Higher order in math and physics, the concept of a higher order means that you. Um, just in, in general, you have interactions between two waves, say, and they might overlap, interfere, and at the point where their oscillations are exactly the opposite, they might cancel each other out, and the point where their oscillations are in concert, they create a constructive um, interference pattern and amplify each other happens in the ocean. Um, I love looking at it when I'm surfing. You see a wave, and sometimes one wave, there's different sets out there of waves that come in every few minutes or every 15 minutes, and they're clearly coming from different sources from all across the Atlantic, and sometimes the sets will converge perfectly so that they amplify and create a constructive interference pattern and you'll see the way basically one or two of them will actually double will be about double the size of the average waves that you've been seeing come in until that point and then sometimes they're exactly off and then the set waves are exactly pretty much half or almost completely canceled out to the point where you can't the what's called a destructive interference pattern. So, so anyways, I I just love when science actually applies.